What is up, fell rotors? I'm Joshua Thomas, and I'm back on my full, complete dining room table to talk to you about board games, and it's gonna be Onitama. That's right, I've got the entire table in front of me, which is a sign that things are getting back to normal. Normal's becoming normal again. And so what was once partially my wife's office is now back to just being our dining room. And when the next uh, school semester starts, she'll be teaching uh, elementary school back at an elementary school. So I'm really happy for her and I hope things go well with that. But let's get into what you came here for and that is to talk about Onitama. And Onitama is a deceptively simple game. Uh, I've many times uh, explained this game as being a mix between chess and checkers, and it's not entirely wrong, but after explaining the rules in really less than a minute, uh, I came to realize that, honestly, explaining the rules to Onitama might actually be easier than explaining the rules to checkers. I mean, checkers is just one of those culturally known games. It's just passed down from generation to generation. But Onitama takes a little bit of uh, teaching when someone first plays it. The rule book's not very large. It's only like six pages of actual rules and you can see here it's not very wordy. It's got pictures and stuff. I found that the ease of teaching people this game but also the sort of similarity to chess or checkers makes them a little bit more willing to try it out. And I'm really glad that I ended up getting this game and taking it with me on my annual training trip with our National Guard unit because the guys uh, who ended up playing this really enjoyed it. So this has become one of my go-to games if I'm going to be playing a board game with just one other person and they've not really played modern day board games before. One of the things that is just really easy to learn is the fact that there are simply two ways to win. There's the way of the stone, which is to take one person's master out with either your master or a pawn, or the way of the stream, which is to simply get your master over to the other person's temple arch. That's it. That's how you win. And the way you move is with these movement cards. Each one has a different uh, way of studying, which is this is the mantis. And you simply can move uh, whatever piece is here in the center in the black square to any one of these spaces around the edge of it, so long as it's a legal move. And a legal move means that it doesn't run into one of your own pieces and it doesn't go off the board. So if I were to, say, use the Way of the Mantis, I couldn't use this one bottom square right here because, well, I would be taking any of my pieces backwards off the board. But what I could do is take any one of these, and for this one I could only move them diagonally to the right, and for these three, I could move them in either direction, or for this guy, diagonally to the left. Then, there's this extra card, and I simply take it and replace this, and then it's the next player's turn, and they do the exact same thing. They use one of their movement cards, place it in between the two players, and then they take the one that was left for them by the other player. In each game, you'll only ever use five movement cards, but there are 16 that come in the base game set. There are also some expansions that you can get which add even more movement cards and maybe some other uh, abilities or pawns uh, to the game. Onitama is similar to checkers in that every single piece moves exactly the same. It's just based on whatever these cards say. And then it's also like chess 
in that, let's say it's Blue's turn, and I'm going to use the Way of the Mantis to take out this opponent. I wouldn't want to jump over the opponent. That would be very difficult in this game, as most cards only allow you to move one space diagonally or orthogonally away from your character's starting point. But you, like in chess, take their piece by moving into their space and then simply set their piece off to the side. So that's essentially it. The simplicity of learning this game mixed with the familiarity of playing a game like chess or checkers and the intriguing part of only using five out of your 16 movement cards uh, in each game really makes for a fun and unique experience. And the fact that you can mix these up, you mix them up every single beginning of the game, and then you draw two for each player, and then one in the middle, and whatever color this piece is, is the or this stamp is, is the color that gets to move first. So it's, it's so simple, and by mixing up these 16 different movement cards, it actually creates a unique experience each time you play it. One game can be over with in a flash because maybe you had the tiger card or the dragon card, which allows for movement more than one space away, and you were able to just catch your opponent off guard, which is how I've won most of my matches and honestly how first-time players will beat me. Sometimes I overlook these unique cards that allow you to move two spaces away. And that's the fun of this game, and it's usually over with within 10 to 15 minutes, so it doesn't take that long to play either. This is definitely a great gateway game. It's just a fun game for anyone to have in their collection, and I look forward to playing this more with, you know, new players and seasoned board gamers alike. So, this is Onitama. I've been Joshua Thomas. You've been watching my Tabletop Talk. Thanks a bunch. Hope you'll like and subscribe and check out more board game and video game videos on the Fellroad Express. See you next time.